Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice functional equation. F is a continuous function from reals to reals. And we are given that F of F of X plus Y. So the composition of F with itself of X plus Y is equal to F of X plus F of Y. And we're going to try to find an expression for F of X in terms of f i mean in terms of x so let's see how we can solve these kinds of questions a lot of times with functional equations obviously sometimes additional conditions are given we usually replace x and y with certain values and zero is a very common value that we use sometimes we use you know y equals x y equals negative x because when you replace y with negative x you get f of zero which kind of makes sense in some cases it depends. You, you don't necessarily know what you're going to do uh, all the time uh, unless you've done uh, quite a few problems like this. Even in that case, it might be kind of hard to uh, get started. But let's go ahead and do the following. I want to go ahead and replace y with 0. When I do replace y with 0, a lot of good things happen. First of all, on the left-hand side, we get a 0 here. So... When I say replace y with 0, x will stay as is. Make sense? So x is just a free variable. We're not replacing x with anything or just leave it as is. Or you can say replace x with x, okay? And this gives us f of f of x plus 0, which is just x, f of f of x. And on the right-hand side, we're not touching the x yet, so that's going to be f of x unchanged plus f of 0 because y is 0 remember that one thing that's really good about this equation is that f of 0 is a constant so we kind of got f of f of x in terms of f of x in other words f of f of x is equal to f of x plus a constant so let's go ahead and call this equation number one and at this point i want you to think about the following what would happen if we replace f of x with something else like t right that would give us something like this, f of t equals t plus f of 0, right? And from here, we could possibly proceed as follows. Since f of 0 is a constant, we can call it c, and this would become something like t plus c. Since f of t can be expressed as t plus c, then we could probably write f of x with x plus c, right? Would this work in general? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another scenario but I just wanted to share with you this because you know this is kind of something that you should definitely test out anyways let's go ahead and do this instead now we can go ahead and do the exact same thing for x equals 0 if you replace x with 0 you get the exact same thing but this time you have y instead of the x and you get something like this and because of the symmetry you get another equation but you could also get the second equation from the first one just by replacing x with y. And you can always do that, right? Obviously, that makes sense because replacing y with 0 and then replacing x with y or y with x pretty much turns out to be the same thing. Make sense? Great. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take equation number 1, which is f of f of x equals f of x plus f of 0 and this time we're going to replace x with x plus y I don't want to write x equals x plus y because that would mean y equals 0 that's not my intention my intention is substitution so let's go ahead and replace x with x plus y and that gives us f of f of x plus y equals f of x plus y plus f of 0 remember we don't have a y in this equation and replacing x with x plus y just changes this one and this one. Make sense? Okay. Make sure you do it correctly. If you make any mistakes, then it'll be a problem. Okay? So now, what are we getting out of this? Well, first of all, we're getting that f of f of x plus y equals f of x plus y plus f of 0. At the same time, we do know that the left-hand side, f of f of x plus y, is equal to this. That's the original equation. Remember that? So we could also set it equal to f of x plus f of y, which is nice. Because from here we get a really nice equation. Let me tell you what that looks like. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. 
I will replace f of 0 with something. I think this is time. And I want to use the variable b. And you might be like, why do you use it? Do you want to do 2b or not 2b? No, that's not my intention, even though sometimes I do it. Uh, you'll see in a little bit why that's the case. But I want to replace f of 0 with b. You could also use c, but I want to use b, OK? Now, here's what I'm getting. Just focus on this. Don't worry about this one anymore, because we don't care. That's complicated. But now what we have here is actually pretty good because that gives us f of x plus y plus b equals f of x plus f of y. And I want to isolate f of x plus y. So subtract b from both sides. That'll give you f of x plus f of y minus b. Nice. This almost looks like a Cauchy function equation, doesn't it? If only we did not have the b. Or if b was 0, things would be awesome, right? But we can't just assume that, hey, it's let b equal 0, right? So we need to do more work on that. But no worries. Even though this is not exactly Cauchy, we can make it Cauchy. You know how? By doing a little trick that we almost always use. And that will be subtracting b from both sides. And you might be asking, why are we doing that? Because we want to get 2b or not 2b, right? No, not really. Let me show you. Even though when I subtract b from minus b, we get minus 2b, I don't want to write it as 2b. I want to write it as minus b, minus b. I'll, I'll show you why in a little bit. Now, this is good, right? So far, so good. This uh, follows from here. But take a look. If you pair up these b's with f of x and f of y, we kind of get a really nice pattern. Let's go ahead and do that. So kind of uh, put the b next to f of x and f of y. And now take a good look at this. What do you see? Hopefully you see what I see, even though my variable is b. That we have a function. We're subtracting b from it. And then on the left-hand side, the same thing is happening. You know what that means? We're going to use substitution one more time in a different way. We're going to go ahead and replace f of x minus b with another function, g of x. Since f of x is continuous and b is a constant, g of x will also be continuous, right? So this is cool because this is g of y, this is g of x plus y. So we get the following from here, g of x plus y equals g of x plus g of y by the definition of g of x. And remember, g of x is continuous, therefore it satisfies the Cauchy's functional equation. In other words, g of x can be written as mx, where m is a constant. Remember, uh, any line, linear equation that goes through the origin will satisfy this. But guess what? g of x is also equal to f of x minus b. And remember, our goal is to solve for f of x. From here, f of x can be written as mx plus b. Wow, that looks familiar and linear, doesn't it? Here we go. But is that the final answer? Let's go ahead and sub this into our original equation, see what happens. Maybe we're going to get some information about m and b, right? m and or b. So if you replace f of x with that on the left-hand side, let me rewrite the original equation. So you can refresh your memories. Now, f of x plus y is just going to be m times x plus y plus b. And I have to apply f one more time. And this is going to be mx plus b. This is going to be my plus b, because we have an equation for f of x, right? Now, if you apply f again, you're going to get this whole thing multiplied by m and add b to it. And on the right-hand side, you're going to get something like m times x plus y plus 2b. Now, I can say 2b or not 2b. I have a right to say that, right? Now, if you distribute the left-hand side, you're going to get m squared times x plus y plus mb plus b, and this is equal to m times x plus y plus 2b. Now notice that x and y are real numbers. This needs to be true for all real numbers. Therefore, we can safely say that the coefficient of x plus y needs to be the same on both sides. This implies m squared equals m. And that means m equals 0 or m equals 1. Let's take a look at the second thing. This tells us that, OK, mb plus b is equal to 2b or not 2b. mb is equal to 2 if you subtract, oops, <laughs> what did I do? just made it be disappear? Subtract b from both sides. And if you factor out, like put everything on the same side and factor the b out, you get b equals 0 or m equals 1. Now take a look. If b 
b is equal to 0, m doesn't have to be 1, in which case m can be 0. So m equals 0 and b equals 0, I think should work. That gives us f of x equals 0, identical constant 0 function. Or if m is equal to 1, then b can be anything and pretty much b is a real number, in which case f of x can be written as x plus b. As we talked about it before with the t method, we got the same thing, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.